Hello again, everyone. Dr. Vincent Lau and Rob Artenfeld here from Critical Care Western and the westernsano.ca website, presenting a series on transesophageal echocardiogram, or TEE. This is a new series, which is meant to be a step up from transthoracic echocardiography, or TTE, and as a means of diagnosing other cardiac pathologies. The topic of today's screencast will be cardiac sources of embolism, specifically from the left atrial appendage. A common question asked of TEE in a patient with a stroke or another distal showered systemic infarct, i.e. mesenteric ischemia or femoral artery occlusions, is whether there is a specific cardiac source of embolization causing said ischemia. Although interrogation of the cardiac sources of embolism is an advanced skill and requires some extra training, I will be introducing the principles of looking for a substrate for cardiac sources of embolism, including looking for spontaneous echo contrast, low flow stasis, as well as interrogation of the left atrial appendage specifically to look for clot. Hopefully the screencast will calm some of your fears about advanced applications of TEE and help with a good foundation for you to perhaps start performing left atrial appendage interrogations in your own practice. As for other sources of cardiac emboli, we'll be covering both infective endocarditis and shunts with paradoxical emboli in separate screencasts. As a disclaimer, this series is not a comprehensive overview of TEE as full TEs have at least 20 standard views, but we will highlight important views for these cases. For a more comprehensive overview of TEE, please consider the options listed. Getting to the case, we have a female who undergoes an embolectomy and fasciotomy by vascular surgery for right leg ischemia from an embolus thought to be from the patient's prior atrial fibrillation with a subtherapeutic INR off Coumadin. Post-op, she is started on IV heparin to prevent further embolic events. However, she subsequently gets a large left MCA stroke, and neurocritical care takes her off the IV heparin for risk of causing hemorrhagic transformation. The ICU team wonders if this is actually safe to do, and asks for a POCUS TEE to rule out further active clot from the heart. So stepping away from the case for an example of normal anatomy, we start out by getting our view of the mid-esophageal two-chamber view, which is focusing primarily on left-sided structures. This is obtained by getting our mid-esophageal four chamber and then adding 90 degrees to it on the omniplane angle. To orientate ourselves, we see here that there's a left atrium, mitral valve, left ventricle, and also attached to the left atrium in continuity, the left atrial appendage seen here. Next, what we do is we focus in on the left atrial appendage seen here and we zoom in on it. And we see that we have a wall known as the Coumadin ridge, seen here, or the Q-tip sign, a prominent muscle ridge formed between the left atrial appendage and the left upper lobe pulmonary vein, sometimes mistaken for clot. In patients with AFib or low flow state, the left atrial appendage is a classic place where clot may form. And we're primarily zooming in to see if there's any obvious 2D imaging of clot within the left atrial appendage, which is not seen in these pictures. Next, we put color over the left atrial appendage and we turn the Nyquist level down to a low level of 20 centimeters per second and look for alias flow. If there's alias flow in the left atrial appendage, this is not in keeping with a low flow state and less likely a nidus for a clot formation. As we can see here, there's aliasing of flow in the left atrial appendage. And last but not least, we will place a pulse wave Doppler into the left atrial appendage to analyze the spectral Doppler signal. We will put our equal sign and place it into the left atrial appendage. As we can see here, we have captured the spectral Doppler signal from the left atrial appendage by pulse wave. This would be examples of normal flows seen on the left atrial appendage. This is reassuring because we use a cutoff of 20 centimeters per second, indicated by these red lines above and below the baseline, and we see that the flows for the left atrial appendage are much larger than the 20 centimeter per second cutoff indicating that these flows are less likely to be nidises for clot formation. Getting back to our patient in the ICU with multiple embolic events, we see here that the patient does not have a normal left ventricle, more depressed in this mid-esophageal two-chamber view. We also see, although not seen well, some spontaneous echo contrast, otherwise known as smoke, indicating a possible low flow state in the left atrium. This will be seen better on later views. We will then hone in and zoom in on the left atrial appendage with the zoom function 
and we see here that there's an echogenic mass within the left atrial appendage, which looks like clot. And there's some echogenic stranding as well on this mass. With the gain turned slightly up from our previous views, we now see more evidence of smoke indicating a low flow state. And then we put a color box over the left atrial appendage with our NICOS turned down to a low level again, 22 centimeters per second. And we don't see a lot of aliasing of color that we saw in our normal previous case example. So this is all concerning for a low flow state, supportive of the clot that we previously saw. And finally, we have a pulse wave Doppler spectral signal from the left atrial appendage of our patient. And we see that the flows do not even meet a cutoff of 20 centimeters per second. So this is all non-reassuring and suggestive of a low flow state with low flows of less than 20 centimeters per second, ongoing smoke and spontaneous echo contrast, and also a visualization of an active clot in the left atrial appendage and ongoing nidus for further formation. So in case summary, this unfortunate female with multiple involic events was discovered to have an active thrombus on TE with ongoing low flow state and smoke in the left atrial appendage. She subsequently had restarted on IV heparin for new clots to her spleen and kidneys causing AKI. Thanks once again for joining us on the westernsano.ca website. Please check out the rest of the POCUS TE series or any other content posted on the website. We hope you join us again in the future. Thank you very much and have a nice day.